Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. Today we'll be painting a mandala on a birdhouse and we'll also be showing you how to do the color block technique using a fade. The colors that inspired this today are the Aurora Borealis, which is an incredible light show that's caused by collisions between electrically charged particles released from sunspots that enter the Earth's atmosphere. So we'll be using these colors today, the purple, the vibrant lime green, and the beautiful blues in this color scheme. First you want to start with a nice sturdy birdhouse and we're going to be using some folk art multi-surface black paint and I'll be getting this in every nook and cranny of this birdhouse. I usually start on the inside edges under the eaves and then I spread it out to the rest of the birdhouse. Make sure that I get it all nice and flat so it will dry without any seams. Once the entire surface is painted, I will let it dry for a couple hours and then we'll be ready to put on some guidelines. Today I'm using stencils from Land and Sky Mandalas. You can buy these online and I will have the link in the comments of the video. This is a wonderful collection of see-through stencils that you can use on any dotting project. I'm going to be using the 12 segment guidelines for this roof. It just fits right on there perfectly. I can mark my center dot and then use my charcoal white pencil to draw in the guidelines for the mandala. Once that's done, I'm going to flip the birdhouse over and do it on the opposite side. Now I purchased these wonderful little paint cups from Hobby Lobby. They're just the right size for this project and they have airtight lids, which is crucial because when you are doing the fade project, you will need to come back to your paints over and over again. And you wanna have them covered in an airtight container so they don't thicken up. So the paints are listed in the video comments and they are all multi-surface paints. Some of them are folk art, some of them are cream coat. I've used Martha Stewart before, that works very well. But we're basically doing three shades of green, three shades of blue, and three shades of a like a purple burgundy tone. I'm also going to be using Liquitex pouring medium to thin some of the paints. And if you have paints that are already too thin, you can thicken them with Arteza Outdoor Paint. This is a very heavy bodied acrylic and it's great to add body. The Golden Fluid Acrylics can be used to boost color saturation if you're finding that your craft paints just aren't bright enough. So I'm going to show you the difference of some of these right out of the bottle. This particular multi-surface paint came out perfect it had the right consistency, sort of uh, like a soft yogurt, and that is just the right consistency for dotting. So I didn't have to do anything to this one. I can just put the lid back on, set it aside, and move on to the next bottle. This one came out of the bottle too thick. You can see it's almost like toothpaste. So I knew I was going to have to add some pouring medium to this. The nice thing about the pouring medium is that it will thin your paints, but it won't cause them to lose any of their color saturation, and it won't reduce the paint's elasticity or the glossy finish. Sometimes water will make your, your paints crack when they dry, or they will fade. But the pouring medium works great. So now I'm going to be combining some paints to create in-between tones. In order to do this fade effect, you want to have tones that transition from one color to another. So I'm simply mixing paints back and forth here to see how close I can get, but still have a different tone. And this, I needed a little bit more vibrancy in this almost fuchsia color, so I added some drops of the Golden Fluid Magenta to boost the color saturation. Now this is pretty good, but I'm finding that there's too much contrast between these green shades. So I'm going to mix two of them together to create a fourth shade. 
Now I know I can use those same here. I need a transition between the purples and the blues, so I mixed these two together to form a fourth shade. And you can do this with your paints. So long as you can transition from the purples to the greens, you'll be fine. Instead of using dotting tools on the fade, I'm going to be using a small round brush. And you simply load this up with as much paint as possible without it actually dripping off as you're transferring it over to the birdhouse. And then you're just going to tap it onto the surface until paint comes off of it and forms out into a little bubble. Not really a bubble, I guess more of a button. And if the dot is not big enough, you simply reload and continue to tap until the dot is the size you want it. So you're going to randomly place dots all around the bottom edge of the birdhouse in your darkest purple. And try and make these large dots and medium sized dots. Wipe off your paintbrush carefully on some wet paper towel and then switch to the next shade and do the same thing. You'll be kind of getting in between the previous dots, making sure that they don't touch. Starting with the largest dots, sort of randomly placing them. And then moving some up a little bit higher because you're going to be working your way toward the top of the birdhouse. Clean off your brush and go to the next shade. Remember just to tap your brush down and it will make the dot grow to a larger size. What you're working for here is really a lot of variety in the size of the dots. Switching to the blue shades, you'll see that I'm, I'm moving them down into the purple but also moving them up so they blend together. Switch into the lighter blue. And if you're finding that your paint isn't really coming off your brush nicely and forming these little pools, then you'll need to add more of the pouring medium. You don't want any peaks. Now coming into the green shades. And this is the color that really reminds me of the Northern Lights. When I saw them here in my hometown, I was in college, and the colors were so incredibly gorgeous and vibrant. And it was a, a long curtain of light that moved in gentle waves across the entire horizon, and it was reflected in the water of the bay. It was a moment I'll never forget, and it's, it's something that I, I really hope to see again in my lifetime. So once you've placed all your large and medium dots, you're going to switch to a small dotting stylus. Um, this is just a manicure stylus that I got from the grocery store. It's got a little ball point on the end. And I'm going to start filling in space with the same colors, but just with this small stylus. And this is going to take some time. You'll think that you've done all your dotting, but you haven't. <laughs> you just have to keep at it. Wipe off the tool in between each of the colors and just keep turning the birdhouse and finding, oh, there's another little space. There's another little space. And you can add some of the green down into the purple area and some of the purple up into the green area. And that just helps blend it and 
because the dots are so tiny, you won't really notice it when you stand back. It will just seem like a cohesive fade. So take your time and try and fill in as much space as pos possible. Now allow, allow this to dry before you start working on the mandala. I'm sort of propping it up on the edge of a paint bottle here so you can see it better. I'm using dotting tools from Mark's Mandalas again, and the numbers correspond to the numbers on the tool, but you can use whatever dotting tools you have. We'll be starting off with a large center dot in the lime green. I'm just going to swirl that flat because I know I'm going to be doing a top dot later. Now moving to a smaller size, I'll be placing a medium green dot on each of the guidelines. First I'll start by just creating a cross and then I'm going to fill in two dots in between each of those. Now moving to a slightly larger size in the dark green, I'll be putting one on each of the guidelines and then skipping, so I'll end up with six. Now I'll be walking the lime green dots around each of these dark green dots. And I'm using a very small tool this is my polymer clay sculpting tool with a fine ball point. I got this on Amazon and I love it to do really small work. Some daughters can do this with a brush too, but I haven't mastered that yet. I'm still more comfortable with a tool like this. Okay, so once that is all the way around, just add a slightly larger dot at the edge of that petal in the same color. Now we're going to walk around, but this time in the turquoise. can see how that really brightens up this petal shape. Now I'm going to a large tool with the sky blue, this light blue color, and putting that right at the end of the petal. That one seemed a little wonky to me, it's a little off, so I just used a Q-tip to take it off, get up as much paint as you can, and then I went back over with the original black color, make sure there weren't any smudges left behind, I kind of shot that with the blow dryer to dry it off, and then replaced the dot. Now I'm going to walk some dark blue dots around this light sky blue dot. These are slightly larger, I'm using a little bit bigger stylus on this. And then I'm putting three medium blue dots at the end of this petal. Do that all the way around. And then I'll finish walking those dots in the light blue, back to the light blue.
now adding a medium green dot in between the petals. And then with a slightly larger tool, adding a dark green dot in between the petals. And then a light blue dot. Now I'm getting to that wonderful vibrant fuchsia color that I created adding the golden fluid magenta. And we're going to walk a small row around that blue dot, just snugging it right in between those blue petals, and then adding a larger medium fuchsia dot at the end of that petal. And then walking around in the light purple. This was sort of a, a lavender shade. My lightest shade of purple. Now I'm adding a large fuchsia dot at the end of the blue petals. We're just expanding our Aurora Borealis colors, working out from the greens out to that beautiful fuchsia purple. And then I'm going to add two medium green dots on either side of that fuchsia dot. And now I'm going to add some swooshes. This is basically just placing a dot and dragging it. And I'm sort of eyeballing this. I want it to be in between the two petals and then to drag toward that green dot. I'm going to do this in the light blue. So I'm creating a dot and then I'm going to drag it toward the green dot. Makes a little comma. Now on the other side, trying to get it in between the petals and then lined up with the purple dot and then dragged toward the green dot. It helps to have a target to drag your swooshes toward. Just helps your eye get there. So I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm trying not to rest my hand in the wet paint. I did that several times and then I'd have to turn off the camera and go wash my hand and fix it and then restart. It's a little bit more difficult than painting on a stone or on a canvas. Okay, those swooshes are all done and I'm going to switch to the dark blue and do the same thing underneath those light blue swooshes and these will be shorter and smaller. Just drag those right to the green dot. I'm going to mix up an, uh, a very light green because I know I want to do a top dot on that center dot in the same tone, just quite a bit lighter. So I'm adding some white multi-surface paint and I'll do a top dot on the center. And we're ready to do some other top dots. This has dried now enough and I'm going to be using the light green top dots on those dark green petals and then I'm adding medium blue top dots and then some more of the light blue top dots
and then switching to this, this lavender color for some top dots. Whenever you put purple on blue or blue on purple, it's really pretty. Adding some of the light blue to the fuchsia, uh, excuse me, light purple. And then adding medium blue on top of the light blue. And then I'm adding a little tiny lightest green top dot on the inside edge of these green dots. This will give it more of a flower petal look. And we'll also brighten up the interior a little bit more. Then I added a dark blue top dot to that outer fuchsia petal. I wanted to let that inside dry a bit before I added the final top dots. I decided to add a little bit of color to the corners. So I started with the dark purple and then switched to the dark blue. Just a simple four corner design here. And then finished off with two dots of light blue. This just provides a frame for your mandala and gives a nice corner treatment to the top of your birdhouse. So now that the inside of the mandala has dried, I'm going to add my final white top dots. This is just to brighten up the mandala and give it a nice sparkle and glow. You could also add uh, crystals if you wanted to. So now that is all dry and I did the other side in the same pattern and I decided to dot the sides of the birdhouse as well in the fade. And that's what it looks like. It's all done. It's a lot of fun. It's a little time consuming but totally worth it. You'll love the effect. I hope you give this a try. Let this all dry and then you're going to take off the guidelines. Don't forget, <laughs> with a wet Q-tip, make sure you get all of those off. Just gently scrub in between your petals. Make sure you get up all those white charcoal lines. And then you want to finish it with a clear polyurethane UV protectant spray. And you are all done. Have fun with this project, everyone, and thank you for watching.